Okay, so this is part two of the uh, special arrangement battery test. And these two batteries here are the first batteries that we used and uh, we drained them completely. And if you remember the beginning of the test, the, those batteries were at 12.3, um, uh, no sorry, 13.3 and now they've actually uh, recovered and we drain them till close to 11 uh, volts and they're slowly recovering to about uh, so about 11.8 right now uh, at best they would recover maybe about 11.9 if i left them overnight or whatever so they're pretty well drained 12 volts uh, a battery is pretty well drained and then what i've got at the back there is two batteries but they're connected in series and those are also uh, good uh, charge batteries very well conditioned so they're sitting at 26.63 meaning that there is at least 13.3 uh, volts also across them so identical uh, charge on those and their conditioned batteries as well as these uh, two here so what I want to do with this test is we're going to be measuring the uh, watts hour okay on the input here of these two batteries so this is a high potential 26 volt and that goes in series into the motor and then is connected to this battery these two batteries that are connected in parallel and uh, they're at a lower voltage potential meaning that there'll be about a 12 uh, to 13 volts uh, well I guess working its way from 13 volts down to when these batteries here will be discharged so at 22 volts around there these will be drained and the idea behind this whole thing is we're going to be operating a motor as we're charging batteries and we're going to see the amount of watts hours we've used here from the input batteries and the amount of watts hours that we've actually put back into these set of batteries so we're going to see if there is an advantage so here we used 100 watts hour and you can see that from this meter here okay and keep that in mind we have already 100 watts hour on the meter so that will be increasing and whatever it increases to that will be the amount of energy we put in this one here starts at 31 uh, watts hour uh, I can't seem to zero that meter for some reason so we're going to start there so keep that in mind so that will be deducted from whatever the amount will be so there is the time take note and the only thing I need to do now is to complete the circuit is to connect these two in those two connections together and the motor will start turning and these batteries here will start charging and these will be draining and uh, this is the beginning of the test so here we go I'm going to do that right now and do a um, RPM reading as well Okay, so let's note the time and the test has started. Note that already we're, uh, our voltage has dropped on those two uh, front batteries and it's uh, already moved to 32 watts hour. And this uh, meter here is uh, obviously also climbing. And if you look at the voltage on the batteries now is at 12.37. So they are charging and we're at 101 watts hour now uh, on those batteries. So the uh, other thing that's important is we're going to take a RPM reading. And I do want to, um, to kind of monitor that uh, because I think for the test to be fair, we want to also uh, monitor the RPM. Uh, mostly when the batteries become uh, discharged. So we're at 1835. Okay, and um, our previous test, uh, that's pretty well where we started as well. Okay, so here we are at the five minute mark, and I've had a little bit of time now to observe the uh, meters and see uh, what's going on. And uh, let me zoom into the two meters while this is operating here. 
and we're going to be uh, comparing the two. So as uh, I stated, the voltage is uh, basically double the voltage here on the input batteries now compared to the previous test. And uh, our amps is about the same range, we're at 3.8 amps. Uh, but this is what you have to figure and understand that the wattage is now basically double to what we were inputting previously. So there is no way that these two batteries that are 5 amp hours each uh, are going to be able to deliver 2 hours of work like these two first batteries were because at first when we started this on the uh, two batteries in parallel uh, we actually were only delivering uh, 50 watts around that area. It began at about 52 and it dropped itself around 50 is the average uh, wattage. So uh, here we're very close to 100 watts, okay, and uh, basically what is being returned to these batteries here is about what we were using uh, previously. So 48 watts of those uh, 92 watts is being returned to these batteries to be charging them. And uh, if you look at that and you understand that, you're going to realize that uh, how could there really be a much of an advantage? You know, it's not like you're recuperating anything because you're paying for it here on the front end. But we're going to let this test go and we're going to see, you know, really what's going on. These batteries are very thirsty and they're very good quality condition batteries. So they're going to take everything that, you know, is delivered to them. And you see that they are climbing in uh, voltage right now as they're being charged. And uh, there are, they are being charged at a reasonable rate. Um, that is about their maximum charge rate that they recommend for these batteries. Uh, they recommend about uh, 1.75 uh, amps at around 13 volts. So we're okay. We're, we're in that range if you divide that by 2. Okay, so <clears throat> here we are already at the point where I can hear the uh, RPM dropping on the motor. And uh, I'm going to take a reading to show you. So this is the result. 1,000... Try to get that glare out of there. 1,606. And our RPM when we had the depleted first uh, test was actually uh, 1,648. So right now, within only being about uh, 20 minutes into the test, we're already lower RPM than when we had first did the test with the uh, two batteries uh, in parallel to determine uh, how much uh, energy uh, and how much time the motor can work. So keep that in mind, we've already, uh, our motor's not running as as, as quickly uh, or as high RPM as it was and we're only 20 minutes into the test and obviously uh, if we start looking at our meters uh, this really is telling the story like I'm saying here so we have 48 uh, watts uh, here going to our uh, re batteries being recharged okay uh, but we have 88 watts being consumed here so here we have about uh, 35, um, um, yeah, 35 watts hour so far has gone into that motor, okay, and uh, 19 watts hours have gone back into our uh, charge batteries. So if we uh, calculate uh, that, we're, they, uh, we're at about um, 55 uh, watts hours uh, so far, and we're going downhill pretty quickly. Uh, our voltage is already at 23.45 uh, and basically when we reach uh, 22 volts uh, this, this will be the end of the test because that will mean each battery is, will be at 11 volts and that's when we stop basically this uh, first test and uh, I'm quite sure uh, if you do all the math that there is no advantage uh, utilizing this system 
As a matter of fact, I would say there's a disadvantage. Uh, it's not going to run as long, that's for sure, and uh, it won't run the motor as, uh, as hard because basically uh, what's going through the motor is the potential difference between this voltage and that voltage. So uh, that's why we're uh, you know, running uh, much slower and uh, that's what's going on. So I'm going to come back uh, basically uh, at, uh, at uh, 6.55 and show you uh, what's going on there. Just wanted to give you this uh, quick update now. All right, the motor's really uh, struggling along there. We're really dropping fast in RPM. 1,483. And uh, that's the situation. We'll be lucky to get 45 minutes uh, run, basically, I would say. Okay, so we've uh, pretty well reached our uh, crucial level and that means that we uh, have a run for about 40 minutes. So within 40 minutes we have uh, managed to drain our uh, feed batteries below the um, 11 volt uh, mark each. So we're below 22 volts there. So there's one of those batteries that's below 11 volts. and. Um, or the combination of the two anyways. So this is where we should really stop the test and uh, check out what the uh, result is. So there you go. There is our, uh, our meters. So our front batteries are uh, recovering. So they would have to uh, reach uh, basically 24 volts and they will do that. It's uh, obvious there to uh, be at the 12 volt uh, range. So uh, we've roughly um, used about uh, 70, um, 70 watts hours, uh, 71 uh, watts hours of our uh, front uh, battery bank here. And um, this uh, battery bank has uh, charged by about 34 watts hours. That's what we were able to deliver back to it. So uh, when we first ran the test, we were able to run the motor for two hours off these uh, battery banks and uh, utilizing uh, uh, 100 watts hours. And uh, using this special configuration, we were able to uh, only return 34 of those 100 amp hour, uh, watt hours that were taken. So as you see here, this voltage will uh, drop and these batteries would have had to go in the 14.5 uh, volt range to actually uh, get a really good uh, charge. Um, but I don't think it would be possible to do that with this uh, configuration. Uh, you would probably have to have uh, 36 volts on the front head to uh, get these to charge at that level and uh, not lose RPM on the motor. And that's the big thing here that uh, many maybe are not considering. And, um, you know, uh, I don't know where the uh, belief is that there is uh, some kind of an advantage to this because uh, clearly uh, it's very clear that there is not. And uh, most likely is because... Um, these uh, tests are not done correctly and utilizing the appropriate meters here. So watts hours is uh, very, very important to be able to calculate that and these meters uh, do that perfectly and uh, that's how you can have a good idea of 
uh, what does work and uh, what does not. So obviously it is uh, better and uh, you get a better uh, efficiency of your uh, motor, uh, more RPM, uh, utilizing uh, just uh, straight uh, batteries and terminating it into the motor rather than trying to uh, recirculate it into another set of uh, batteries being charged. All what that does is you're doubling your input power like you saw here in this test and um, the more uh, you try to get out of batteries uh, the more uh, the faster they drain so uh, there's no there is no gain uh, out of this uh, kind of uh, special configuration so if I fail to uh, see and understand uh, what anyone is trying to uh, demonstrate with these uh, batteries then please uh, do a appropriate uh, power test as I have and uh, post the video and uh, bring, me, bring it to my attention so that I can uh, learn because I'm doing this because I'm trying to uh, uh, learn obviously and uh, see if there's something that's usable here and I just can't see it. So thanks for your interest and uh, what I'll do is tomorrow morning I will uh, give you another shot uh, of the uh, actual uh, battery uh, voltage these ones here specifically. Um, I would say that they will uh, be somewhere at the 12.4.45 uh, at the highest. Okay so this is the uh, following day now so the batteries have had time to rest and really uh, come to their real uh, resting uh, charge voltage and uh, I wasn't too far off I predicted 12.45 at the best and they are resting at 12.42 and we put in 34 watts hours and uh, basically I would say we've got them about 35% uh, charged so we would most likely have to put in at least uh, 100 watts hours to be able to get them to where they were when we first began which was at 13.32 uh, I believe and uh, that is the realistic uh, results and reality of these uh, test